So hi peeps, welcome back. Um, I know I didn't get a video up last week, but I was taking a break. I got the book done and to my editor, or rather she got the book to me, and I took some time off and we've had some renovations going on. And just in general, it's been kind of crazy. So today I thought I would talk about ways to make the transition from traditional author to indie author easier. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, well, have a seat. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Hit the bell so you get notified when I have new videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up if you would. And we'll get started here in just a moment. So a quick recap here, in case you're not sure who I am. I am Yasmin Gallinern. I am a New York Times USA Today and Publishers Weekly best-selling author. I write urban fantasy and paranormal romance. I've written paranormal mystery and nonfiction, um, magical, metaphysical work in the past. And uh, yeah, so I've been in the business over 25 years and I spent 20 of it in traditional publishing. And I spent the past four in indie and going into my fifth indie year. So I feel like I have a unique point of view from both sides of the fence. Um, so we will, yeah, take on the subject of how to make that transition a little bit easier. Now I'll give you a little bit of background, very little bit of background here. Um, in 2016, the publisher I was with kind of came crashing down on a whole bunch of authors. We were making them money, um, but they decided that they wanted to go in a different direction, and if we didn't go with it, we were out the door. Um, I did not want to write what they wanted to publish, and so I decided I was going out on my own. I looked for another publisher for a little while, but I realized very quickly that the market had gotten extremely difficult. Um, it was at a point where I wasn't willing to accept the advances that were being offered, and especially with no guarantee of marketing or publisher being behind me or anything. So I just said, okay, I'm gonna try it my own, try it myself. And I switched over to indie. And I was very, very lucky in having a few good friends who have been very successful indie authors over the years on my side helping me, um, giving me advice. But there are some things that I can tell you that will make it easier if you are thinking about going indie, whether you are a trad author or not, these can help. But especially if you are trad, traditionally published, looking at switching over to indie publishing. And I've got five basic tips here. Um, I think they're pretty important across the board. And some of them are not easy to swallow. But um, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I, I paid attention and I listened. And I, I just took a deep breath and went, okay, this is a new type of publishing for me and it's not going to be the same. One of the first things you have to know is indie publishing and trad publishing are two different animals. Very, very different. Two different venues. Two different approaches to publishing. And there is a lot of difference. I mean, yes, you have to have a good book either way. Um, but kind of there, all resemblances cease. The first thing I would suggest to you, and I strongly suggest this, and this is me coming in. I came in with 20 years of experience, multiple lists under my belt, um, successful, you know, from my former publisher. I had reached quite a, quite a good success with them. But the first thing you have to know is you need to check your ego at the door. You need to go, okay, I don't know how indie publishing works. I don't, I haven't published this way before. 
it's going to be different and I need to learn. What you have learned from trad, you need to put it all to the side, except for writing a good book, and learn new. You have to learn everything over again. Some of it you'll have a bit of a handle on because you've dealt with it peripherally. But when you are an indie author, you are the publisher, you are the marketer, you are the promoter, you are the art department, you are everything, you wear all the hats. You cannot do things the same way. You have to remember you are in this as a publisher for your own books. So that is the first thing, is you have to let your ego go. And you have to not sit there and go, well, I have published for 20 years and I should know this, so I'm not going to listen to you. No, don't do that. Um, that's only going to A, alienate the people who would help you, and B, it will slow your progress in making a success at indie publishing. Now, can you make a success at indie publishing? Yes, you can. Very much so. I am actually doing better in indie than I was the last few years that I was with Berkeley. Um, and I did pretty good with Berkeley. But I am doing better in indie. I work my ass off. I worked my ass off with Berkeley too, in a different way. You know, but I'm happier too. And that, that is a success that I couldn't count at Berkeley. I wasn't happy. Um, I realized at one point that I had the TV or music on constantly because if I sat in silence when I wasn't working, I was so exhausted emotionally from some of the strains that I was dealing with there that I would burst into tears. And I could not sit in silence because I couldn't let myself hear my thoughts. I couldn't let myself feel how tired I was of struggling against some very strong odds that are in traditional publishing. Um, there's so much you don't control. And when it becomes frustrating enough that it wants to make you scream, it just eats away at you. Now, yes, there are things you don't control in indie too. And there are always going to be acts of COVID, acts of various, you know, things that will trigger a book to fail or lower your sales or even you know, make your sales bounce up that you don't control, that you can't control, but there's so much that you can. And that realization that I would have more control over my career, it really made a difference for me. So I, you know, I shut the fuck up. I listened to people and I learned. So, yeah, check your ego at the door. Listen and learn. Get involved with indie author groups and pay attention and don't come in there as the know-it-all. Don't come in there as, well, I was a trad author because I'm sorry, that doesn't work. Now, I'm going to make a confession here and it's one I don't like talking about because it doesn't look good on me. There was a point where I did not um, have a very good opinion of self-publishing. It was in the early days. It was in the days when I had friends who lost a lot of money to vanity presses. And I did not realize that vanity press and self-publishing are vastly different animals. I came in from the days when vanity press meant you paid thousands of dollars to a company to pay, you know, print your book for you. And then you had a garage full of books, and I had friends who lost a lot of money to it. Um, and, yeah, there, there was a time when, you know, you could publish anything. I mean, I, I could sit here and I could type out a 100,000-word book with the same word, and I could publish it. It wouldn't get sold. It wouldn't sell, you know, but I could do it. So, yeah, you could publish anything. But if you want to make a career, you will publish work that is good. And a lot of people are making a good career in indie right now. 
That goes into my second point, though. Watch who you work with. Yes, get involved with indie authors. Get to know them. And get to know them for more than just what they can do for you. Apple, will you not lick the... Excuse me a moment. Now that we've put a stop to licking the plastic, um, get to know other indie authors and get to know them for who they are more than just what they can do for you and that's good advice in life in general you know networking is a good thing but networking just solely to see how far you can get ahead is never never a positive um you will learn a lot if you approach people with an open mind and an open heart and you know truly truly want to learn now not everybody is going to be able to give you the time that you would like them to career authors whether indie or trad usually don't have a lot of time to spare which is why i suggest finding a good indie group now one thing i will also suggest is be careful because there are a lot of scammers out there there are a lot of scammers in the indie game you want to make sure that who you're getting in touch with and who you're interacting with, that they're legit, that they aren't someone who, who is going to try and teach you ways to make a fast buck while gaming the system. Because A, that will ruin your career eventually. B, it will get you a very bad reputation. And I'm not naming names here because that's just never a good thing. But there are a couple people in indie publishing in my genre, or close to it, who I will never have anything to do with because I know that they play the, play the system and they screw up other authors. And they're out to make a buck. They're not out to publish good books and find an audience. So, the ways to tell how that is, um, if it's too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. Get to know some very established indie authors, and as they trust you, they will probably help you, you know, by giving you inside information, or by steering you in the right direction. If they don't want to mention names, they will steer you more in the right direction. Um, I will put some links below for a few very good uh, podcasts and YouTube channels of people who can give you good information on indie publishing and who I trust and I, I know some of them and others I have come to trust even though I don't know them. So, yes, get involved in the indie community. One thing that I realized when I was trad, there was a lot of competition. Now, we did try to help each other out, but publishers did not encourage authors to talk too much about business with each other. They don't want you talking about advances. They don't want you talking about business practices of the different publishers. They really don't want that information around. Whereas with the indie publishing community, there's a lot of openness I've, I've found and a lot of willingness to talk as long as you are not using someone, as long as you are not infringing on their time too much. So that would be my second suggestion is get to know the indie community. Become part of it. Accept that it's a different community, but you're still all authors. Trad, indie, we're all authors. We may do things a different way. I do things vastly different than I used to. However, that doesn't change the core love of writing. Number three, realize that some of what you have been told in trad publishing are myths, at least in indie publishing. They don't, they don't ring true. One big thing that I kept being told was you can't write more than a couple books a year or you'll oversaturate your audience. You'll oversaturate your market. Not true. My readers eat up my books. They are thrilled that I am writing more. 
Now, I write more because I can, because I am prolific. Not everybody can write five to six books a year, or some people can write more. It's okay if you can't. Now, it is true that in indie publishing, being able to write a bit quicker is actually a good thing. But if you can't, there are still ways to make a career in indie publishing if you learn proper marketing, proper advertising, things like that. You don't have to write really fast. But another myth I want to break is that quick writers, fast writers, are hacks. I was really constrained when I was in trad. I was writing three books a year and I really wanted to write more. Not just really wanted to write another series and my publisher would not let me. They absolutely would not let me and they had me locked into clauses where I couldn't go elsewhere. So I was kind of constrained. I was, I was sort of roped in. Uh, now that I'm indie, I write, I publish probably six to seven books a year. Now, when I was trad, my books were about 100,000 words, 90,000 to 100,000 words each. So that was about 300,000 words a year. Um, I am now writing books that are 70 to 85,000 words each. So let's take an average, say 80,000. Um, six books a year, I'm writing about 480,000 words a year. I'm still doing a great job. I'm writing tighter leaner because I'm able to write without feeling like I have to pad the books or to throw more in. And the way I explain it to my readers is that I am writing more like a TV show rather than a movie. You have a movie, you get two movies, maybe three a year if you're lucky. You have a TV show, you get an episode every week. Now, in books, that translates to you have a movie, you have a trad book, you get maybe two to three books a year, if that, sometimes one. You have a series, you get between, say, four to seven books a year or so. Um, they may be shorter, but they are more frequent, and I actually find it really helps me stay in the world when I'm writing a lot better because my mind is constantly in the world that I'm writing. So if you can write quickly, don't let people make you feel bad, make you feel like, oh, I must be a hack because I'm writing quickly. No, that doesn't necessarily ring true. It, what makes a hack is someone who doesn't put love into their books, doesn't put care into their books, doesn't put editing into their books, um, who's just basically trying to make a buck off their readers without giving them a quality, quality material. And quality doesn't necessarily mean length of time. On the same route, if you can only write two to three books a year, that doesn't mean that you're out of the picture. That doesn't mean that you're a slow writer. Well, it means that you are slower paced, but it doesn't mean that you are, you know, any less than a writer who writes five to six. We all have our own pace, and that's a very important thing to remember. As a writer, every writer has their own pace, has their own style, has their own voice, and if you accept that, it's... It's a much, I hear one of my cats hacking. If you accept that you have your own pace, it calms the nerves inside. You know, it's like we all have our own style. We all have our own pace. We all have our own tastes. We all have our own abilities. Um, another myth I'd like to break is that the lists matter so much. Now, yes, in trad, the lists do matter. But I guarantee you there are books that I have that hit the lists that didn't sell that well. There are books I have that didn't hit the list that sold really well. Um, and I will tell you one other thing. And nobody knows how like the New York Times 
um, gears its bestseller list. We've been trying for years to figure that out. Nobody really knows what criteria they use. But a lot of books have hit the New York Times list that didn't sell shit. Basically, they didn't sell very well. A lot of books never hit a list that have sold hundreds of thousands of copies over the years. In indie, the lists don't matter. They don't matter to your readers. Now, it's nice to hit the list. I, I kind of miss that. Yes, I do. I will admit that. But it doesn't mean your books are less. It doesn't mean that you're not as good a writer. It means, basically, it's an ego stroke. And in indie, yeah, maybe it will be a bit more visibility, but you know who's looking at the bestseller lists mostly? Other authors, not the readers. Um, one last myth I would like to break is that when you put a book out for free, you're not valuing your work. Now, I will never, never put all my work out for free or for really low cost. I do value my work more than that, but because you make a higher percentage of royalties, so much higher, you don't have to sell as many copies. And I really resisted doing like the first book free or doing a sale where the first book was free for a while. I just couldn't bring myself to that. And then I talked to friends and they really hammered it into me that this actually can work. And so I have found, yes, having a sale where you put the first book down to free or 99 cents, it makes the series sell. If you advertise that book at that price, and if you, you know, make sure your readers know, it so the sell-through can be really good, especially if you get what's called a book bub deal, featured deal on it. Or, or if you advertise it in one of the places like Free Booksy or Bargain Booksy or something, you can you can bounce the sell through of the rest of the series up quite a bit. So you know, I used to get really irritated by the people who put out books, but ninety nine cents or stuff, because it felt like well they're they're undermining, you know, my $7.99 book. But I quickly began to realize that <laughs> the percentage of royalties that I make off of books that are lower cost as an indie far outweighs what I made off the books $7.99 as a trad author. Um, I used to make 8% royalty off of the price and then it would have to pay back the advance before I ever saw a penny and a lot of those books I never saw another penny other than the advance on when you put it out indie you get no advance but you start making money with the first sale and I have found that getting a monthly paycheck from those sales even though I may not you know be it may not be consistent but it makes a hell of a difference in my budgeting. And it. there were so many times, even when I was at the height with, with my ex-publisher, where I would be waiting on a check from them and they would have the manuscript and it would be sitting there in the desk and it would be lost through the cracks for a while and I would be just desperately waiting for that check to come through because I am the primary breadwinner for the family. And I had done my job, but, you know, you're dependent on when that publisher wants to send you your check. And they can wait for a while. They can go, oh, I forgot. Or, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't get to it, you know, yet. Or number of other things. Whereas I pretty much each month, I can keep track of my sales. I know how much I'm going to make this month for the most part you know, within a small range. I know how much these books are bringing in. I can budget accordingly. I know when I'm getting paid. That makes a massive difference. 
Okay, now tip number four. You don't have to sell nearly as many books to make more money. I don't sell nearly as many as I used to when I had a wide distribution through Barnes and Noble and Borders and you know all those other stores, but I'm making more money. And that's because of the higher royalty percentage. Um, and you know, I know some of I lost some readers because most of my sales are through e format now. But honestly, what I've lost, I've made up with new readers, and I've made up in terms of the amount that I actually see off my my work. You know, I actually see a good amount now off my work. And I have come to value e-format a lot more than I used to. I used to not like reading e-format, and I know a lot of people still have problems with it. But, um, but frankly, you know, I, I'm getting up there. I'm almost 60 years old. My eyes, I... I don't have bad eyesight, but I get eye strain because I'm at the computer all day long. I need to be able to re to um, increase the font. I need to be able to move that font up to read myself. And with ebooks, I can do that. And I don't have that much space in my house left, you know. I don't have the space for new books. Except on my Kindle, I have a ton of space. And yes, I do use Kindle because for me, it's one of the easiest formats. It's got, I, I can have the Kindle app on my computer, on my phone, on my tablet. I have a Kindle. Um, I actually prefer it, but it helps, it helps my eyesight. And, you know, frankly, the fact that I'm making those sales means during a pandemic, people can still get my books when they can't go to a bookstore. You know, they can get it through the different booksellers who, who do e-format. During, you know, a crisis when someone doesn't have enough space in their house, they can still get my books. Um, and it's just much easier for an indie publisher to make sales with e-format, with digital books. So, yeah, I'm, I'm putting in a, a big plus for that. You know, it's revolutionized the industry. And I predict, I really do in the future, that print books are going to be, they're not going to be out. They're not going to go away for good. But I predict a whole lot of the print books are going to be mainly the mega sellers. You know, like James Patterson, Nora Roberts, Stephen King. Um, and they're going to be the nonfiction, like, the coffee table books and the how-to books. Although I'm getting more and more of my how-to books in e-format too. I've started translating over my writing library and my reference library to e-format except for the ones that take a lot of pictures because I do like being able to open a book and look at the pictures when there's a whole lot like a like identifying plants or something like that. But I really think that as publishing transforms even more and as paper costs rise and as the bookstores make it harder to get sh shelf space, because um, it, it's really hard to get shelf space for trad books anymore, a good share of the trad authors are never going to see their books on the shelves at this point. And before people go blaming any corporations on that, mismanagement at a lot of the large chains, bookstore chains, caused <laughs> mismanagement at a lot of the large bookstore change, chains caused that problem, caused them to close down and not be a viable um, competitor. The fifth lesson I would like to tell you, the fifth hit, hint or tip. Get out of the mindset that you can't hack it in trad. You know, get over the 
sometimes it's snobbery, sometimes it's fear, sometimes it's disappointment. Well, I can't make it in trad. I can't get into trad. You know, I was in trad for 20 years. A lot of good books never, never made it into traditional publishing. A lot of really good authors never made it in. Why? Number of reasons. One, it wasn't what the publishers were buying. Two, racism. Huge thing right now. I guarantee you. The percentage of black authors or Native American authors, not very big because a lot of the trad publishers just don't see a market for it. Yeah, depends on what's selling at that point. Uh, I write urban fantasy. It's practically dead in traditional publishing right now, but in indie, it's flourishing. There's a lot of indie readers who love urban fantasy. Paranormal Romance is moving over to indie more. There's some still in trad, but not a whole lot. And as the cycles wax and wane in traditional publishing, if you love writing one or two things, one or two genres, you're going to find your audience and they're going to stick with you. They're not going to get bored because they'll come to love your worlds. They'll come to love your books. So those are some tips to make it Make the transition from trad to indie publishing. Um, it takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of courage to walk away from trad publishing or even to just dip your toes into indie. And it takes a lot of willingness to learn new things. You have to learn the marketing. You have to learn what makes a good cover. You have to find the cover artist. You have to find a good editor. Never, ever forget you need a good editor. There are a lot of them out there. In fact, there are a number of good editors who used to work at publishing houses that are looking for indie writers now. So, you know, I'll probably do a follow-up to this video. I think that's about long enough for this one. But there is a start in moving away from trad into indie. And I hope that it helped a lot. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And I will probably do a second video on this because there's so much more to talk about um, in making this transition from trad to indie that I don't think I could fit it into one video. Um, anyway, I will talk to you next week. And take care. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And um, yeah, have a great week. And next week, I will have my nails back. I actually get an appointment tomorrow. Um, I'm so excited. Of course, it's with proper protocol, masks, taking temperature, 25% um, capacity in the salon. And I feel comfortable with all of that. And I feel comfortable that they will be checking out, you know, the people who do the work there. Um, but it'll be nice to have a little semblance of normalcy again. Bright blessings until next week. Take care. Bye-bye.